Hello. Right, I'm gonna let you look at that for a minute. And then I'll move it out of the way. Can you see anything? I think so. So, I'm totally caught up by this. I really can't think about anything else. <coughs> and um, it's just clearing up my vision of what's going on because For quite a while now, we've just been, you know, waiting to see what's coming around the corner. If things are panning out as I thought they would, um, you know, since Brexit, you know, and, you know, is it going to succeed and everything? Well, it looks like it is. Um, but still, we're not done yet. So everything's been like looking around the corner. There've been all these. Uh, setting of dates and stuff and there was something about the 717 I still hold that something did happen that night um, on a spiritual sort of level um, that I remember now it wasn't massive but these things sometimes small beginnings anyway this particular timeline here has really captured me. I uh, can't think about anything else. I'm interested. I want to talk about it. I'm finding it fascinating. More and more things are coming out of it. <clears throat> so I've even got the big paper out, you know. <coughs> and if you look down the left hand side you'll see the dates starting with 1919 now I just thought out there a minute ago we're, we're talking you know if you like seven steps would be a hundred and twenty years ish wouldn't it and that's a generation and you know after no we said man will live for a hundred and twenty years Are there nine stages, ten stages? Well, put a number on it, but I did like the fact that it starts with a nine and then goes down to one, and then if we're thinking first trumpet, second trumpet, da 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 da, even though there are only seven trumpets, there are other stages after that, which I haven't written a lot on, I've just left them. Um, I, I don't want to do too much on this and then regret it. Uh, the pictures I was drawing, complete failure. <laughs> and this aspect I'm not so sure about yet. And the churches. It's just interesting, you know. I just like to get the information down a bit differently. Um, my other sheet of paper that I was doing videos on. Da 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 da. This right column on the right here is now, I've put it in the middle and put a bit more about that. So I'll move this out of the way and I'll, I'll, I'll read them in a minute and go for it. I just want to let you look at it for a bit. So I'm going to say it, I think I'm the lamb, I think I am the lamb. So that seems really cocky. Because I don't, I don't think I was Yeshua at all. That wasn't me. That was someone else. But he was the lamb then. Why isn't he the lamb now? Because he's a brother. Yeah, sure, he's a brother. And you, you know, you, you're at the top for a bit. And I tell you, it's not that, it can be a bit daunting at the top. And everyone will get their go. It's just the time we're in now. But I, 
and it doesn't does it really matter? Well, my eyesight's clearing up. There's uh, something I haven't really mentioned, and it hasn't been, really been that bad, but last six months or so, or even f over the last year, I think the last time my eyesight was, I felt like it was clearing and it was getting better, it's been quite a while. And I've had to admit, you know, that I don't really know what's going on. And it does kind of make sense to me. And before, when I've had a a clearer vision of the future. It does my eyesight does clear up. It's interesting. Uh, it'd be good to have both things in the shop, but I think you've seen that long enough now. Let's have this cozy it here if it will. And bring you in and say hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, you can't see me very well. Is that bloody light? Ooh. Go on, I'll fix this. I'll fix this. I fix things I like having problems to fix, you know. <laughs> you know, when you have a problem to fix, it is good. Something to tackle with. There we go. Right. You can't see my thing at all. That's no good, is it? It's too low. Does it? Does it really matter? What's that gonna do? Is Oh, you've seen it, you've seen it. I can read it. And just go like that. No, I can't do it. Um, so what, what am I thinking about? The first trumpet, 1919. It just... The right time. I mean, World War One had finished but in those stages war was still fun you know I mean for the British Empire you know, fighting people with mangoes and things for quite a while World War One obviously wasn't fun it went wrong big time but it was the I've heard commentary before about people saying about how things felt after the war finished that there was this sort of a an ill wind and blowing nobody any good. Like something had started, you know. Something had started. So I don't know what to say now. So we're in this we're in the sixth trumpet, two thousand and fourteen to two thousand and thirty-three. So that's um you know for people who just oh, just waiting for the next thing next thing to come along, you know. I mean things will be happening. But what can we expect to see before twenty thirty three? Well, we can expect to see 200 million man army. And that's going to be China, isn't it? We all know that's going to be China. And they are... And interesting how it said... Um, on the sixth trumpet, angels loosed over the great river Euphrates. Everything's about the great river Euphrates. It's hard to draw a picture of Prepared for one year, one month, one day, one hour. So I'm feeling that I got feeling at the time that was ISIS slay one third of men. And then it mentions the army of two hundred million. Uh, which bit's that from again?
Oh yeah, seventh, sixth trumpet. I've got those written down. Anyway, then it mentions the two hundred million men, horses, heads of lion, fire, smoke, and brimstone. So if the ISIS got China to decide, look, you know, look, stuff going on like this, we we need an army. We can't we can't be complacent about this. Uh, we need to protect all our food and shit. So they've got a big army. And they might, uh, you know, once you've got a big army, you might think, well, we might as well use it. we got the three devil spirits from the mouth of the dragon, the beast, and false prophet, kings and all, to gather for Armageddon. And this is what we're looking at. <coughs> realistically in the world it's um, because everything's coming to a head resources are tight the whole world's in debt to the IMF or whatever and you can't just rub off all the debt because then people will complain People will say, well, we didn't borrow as much money as Japan because, you know, we wanted to look after ourselves, be sensible. We're, you know, and Japan just borrowed way too much money and you're just going to let them all off? You're not going to have agreement on that, are you? Everything's coming to a head and this, these devil's spirits coming from the mouth of the dragon, the beast and the false prophet are, and they're fooling everybody. They are fooling everybody. And I think someone might have made a complaint about my YouTube channel because of my um, views on vaccinations. Because suddenly my views have just stopped, pretty much. It seemed like it was going well, some momentum. It was also just after I uploaded the video of about... Um, uh, Brian Harvey being buggered by John Major. And that was going, I thought that was going to go, I thought that was going to be a goer. And then it just stopped. And then these last videos, I've had zero. But I don't care. Because look, I'm not like expecting, I'm seeing, I'm more happy with there being a, a longer time period for things to happen. I think back in 2015 and early 2016 I was I was desperate. I could, I just thought when I heard like people on the news and that talking about 2017 I thought no. <laughs> we can't we can't go on much longer. <laughs> and um yeah, I was waiting for Brexit. Oh, by the way, and um, Seal 6 does talk about a great earthquake. And Brexit was an earthquake. Now, there's more earthquakes to come. And uh, particularly in the Trumpet 7, I mean, the Vial of Wrath, the Trumpets, and the Seals all mention earthquakes. On number seven. <clears throat> uh, vial of wrath. Number seven. Into the air. It is done. Great earthquake. Islands fled. Mountains not found. Great hail. Trumpet. Temple of God opened in heaven. Lightnings, voices, thunderings, earthquake. Great hail. Seal seven. Silence for half an hour. Then lightnings, thunderings, earthquakes, voices. So, pretty, pretty, uh, all, um, singing the same song on that one. <laughs> Get it? Singing the new song. Where have we got that? We're singing a new song. That was from 1995 to 2014. On Mount Zion, the Lamb and the 144,000. The name and Father's name on forehead. Singing a new song. The hour has come. Reap, gather the harvest, the grapes for the wine press. 
Now we're not actually going to be treading the wine press until we'll be treading on the wine press much too long. Repent. Repent. The treading of the wine press doesn't come Hang on a minute. Well, that's God's wrath, isn't it? Oh, yeah. What was I looking at? Yeah, here we go. Uh, do, 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 do. So, number, six, number seven, that's when seven. So from 2033 to 2052 is when Babylon will properly be ruined. Now I actually thought when I read about when I read Revelation 18 I thought oh is that talking about 911. And um you can almost think that it is. But trading has gone on in New York. It hasn't stopped. And when this actually happens, it's going to be finished. And not just New York, it'll be every big coastal city finished. Will be. Will be by 2052. And it will happen between 2033 and 2052. Now, it's the Lamb's Wedding Day from 2052 to 2071... That's when the white horse and its rider, Faithful and True, is going to be um, is going to be called Word of God. It's going to be followed by armies in heaven on white horses. It is He who will rule with an iron rod and tread the winepress of the wrath of God. On his robe and thigh written King of Kings. So that isn't going to start happening until after 2052. And it will happen by 2071. And then by 2071, that's when an angel with the key to the abyss and chain will seize the dragon for a thousand years. So between 2071 and 2090, no, sorry, yeah. That's when, that's when the, um, the devil, the dragon, will be taken away for a thousand years. So we're going to have the dragon, the devil, with us for the next 70 years or so, roughly. 60, 70 years, we're going to have the devil and the dragon with us. Now that doesn't bother me at all. Because um, the dragon is the devil, he works, for the, he works for God. He's the final test. He's your final test to see that you're truly ready... For whatever it is you might be having to do. Now, but we do get rid of the beast before that. And the beast is here. It's been, been here since 1976. Then 1995 we got the... On Mount Zion stood the Lamb with the 144,000, so they were here. Uh, then the last plagues thrown out. It's been happening since 2014. These are the last plagues until 2033. 
the sanctuary of heavenly tent of testimony is opened or the truth is coming out so it's like the start of the fight back so the period before 1995 to 2014 big changes were happening but we didn't really know it we were just too caught up in our entertainment and pleasures we didn't really know what was going on they were lying the fuck to us right and the leaders and that doing and the beast doing whatever they do absolutely lying to us all right but we've also got those who won victory over the beast so that happens in this stage as well Those who won victory over the beast. Oh yeah, well, yes, because we've got God's wrath pouring out. And, um, well, how come he doesn't start treading the wine press? Well, maybe he does start before. So he's got to a situation where, if you took the mark of the beast from 1976 to 2014... So like two periods, if you like, 38 years. The mark of the beast is the barcode. So obviously not everyone who, you know, because we haven't got much choice going to the shop, they scan the barcode. But if you're in that system, so if you've got a business and you're making a product and that's getting a barcode put on it, you're probably in the system of the beast. You probably wouldn't have been allowed to get there without sort of you know going on that side choosing that side and it says happy are those who die in the faith happy are those people who stuck to their principles it said no you know people who did take the mark of the beast they will get some of God's wrath depending on how much pain they cause to stay in the mark of the beast or whatever but the devil's going to be around and that's a good thing because we God is turning turning us into aware, fully aware beings of what we fully are. And, and that's why I see these, the, the seven churches, um, I'll <laughs> complete it, and uh, compared to like our own, our own journey. So, so you're not, you're not even started, you've not even started 1919 if you like. If you haven't started to accept that a God exists. If you've not done that, you're still in an ignorant mode. So you're still behind. You're still, you've, you've got to, you haven't even started on this yet, if you're there. So when you start on this, that would be, the beginning would be, you start to entertain that there is a God and you start to think about what you are and everything else. When you start that, it'll be like you personally get the first trumpet. Now, the whole world has been getting, has been going, so, so this is both about the whole world and about every individual. So the whole world started the first trumpet in 1919. Your personal first trumpet could be whenever. Maybe it started in a previous life or whatever. Now I I mentioned earlier like I just said yeah I think I'm the lamb. Now one of the things about the seals is I've in 1997 I'd been to Africa in 1996. I while I was there I had 
I had some amazing experiences. Um, a couple of them were just escaping with my life. But there was this one night, I had this vision. It changed my life in the sense that afterwards I was like, oh, if I fuck up my life, I had that vision. And that meant something. So it meant something to me, like it wasn't for nothing. But when I came back to England, the beginning of 1997, I started to get these really weird perceptions, extrasensory perceptions. And there were about seven of them. And I couldn't understand them. And then back in 2014, I'd got back into God. I'd, re I'd connected with God like for the first time since early childhood. And I was on this path. And so those weird feelings I got for the first time, I got a sense of what they were about. And the sense was is that that was opening the seals. Now, that was f fucking arrogant, I suppose, thinking about it. But it was the first thing I'd thought of that had made any sense of them. And nothing else has since come that has made sense of them. Apart from this, in that they may have been some sort of flashback of something that I perhaps then did in a previous life. So if the seals were opened in uh, 1938 to 1957, then perhaps in a previous life I was doing that. <laughs> it sounds arrogant. If I did that and then, whatever, pre I haven't reconnected with what previous life I was in that time span. I don't know. Yeah. I think I might know the life before it, but not, but not this one yet. It'll come. I'll do a video on it. <coughs> so, and, and what I got in 1997 was a sort of flashback, because I've been to Africa and, you know, reconnecting. I was 19, so I was becoming an adult. So, yeah. So that was that. So back to, so for the individual, so you, you decide to leave the, the blissful ignorance and you want to know the answers and you, you come into contact with God. You're in this like first church. And the first church says, hates evil, but lost the first love. So, and you know, you do see some people who like, and I remember myself just really hating evil, like, fuck, you know, why does it have to exist? And in a sense, that is part like losing your first love. In the sense, your first love is God. That's So how can you just find God and then lose God? It's, it's a weird one, I suppose. But, you know, first steps are weird. Sometimes I just stay, say stuff, right? And quite often, actually, I look back on it afterwards, if I text them on Facebook or whatever, and I'm seeing more meaning in that. I, the moment I say it, I think, what the fuck am I saying? And then actually read into it, and I think, oh, a few levels, that actually makes some sense. Right, so then, so then you, so you go through that, and it doesn't have to be um, 19 years for that, on an individual basis, it might be 19 days, it might be 19 months, it might be whatever, right? Um, so this is this would be then like your, the first sphere, the things that uh, challenges in the first sphere, it's your body. You know, m maybe you get pains in your body, you know, these are the first challenges that you need to work with, right? Moving into the second level, the second church. Money poor, but rich. Now, you might not like being money poor, but it's a, a, a learning experience. So you, maybe you become poor in this second stage, but you are rich in other ways. And maybe this is a first experience for you because you'd only been interested in materialistic things before. And this is how you sort of, sort of learn that actually can be quite happy without possessions and stuff like that. False Jews, tribulation ten days. 
I wouldn't know what to read into that. <laughs> now, I put this as the part of your body, your waters. Because all these things are about the sea, um, your waters, and I'm thinking, well, you know, we are made of 89% water or something like that. And it's like your st your water's stillness, like how, you know, at ease are you? And I suppose if the first stage, you know, you had afflictions on your body and that was a challenge to learn with them. Second stage, now your waters are being challenged, like, um, you know, your stillness, your peace, that gets erupted and that's a challenge. And you know, how do you deal with that? How do you keep yourself calm and stuff like that? Um, third stage, third sphere, Pergamos, white stone given, new name written. Read into that. And I'm wondering as well, these names, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, they feel like they've got some meaning behind them. But and they're not particularly famous, But so that's something I'm going to have to look into. Now here the trumpets and that are all about the sun. Um, I've put in for your part of your body source energy. So like, like the energy we get from God, basically, or love perhaps. If that's disrupted, that's a challenge. How do you deal with that? So all these challenge, these are like disruptions to things which are usually fine, right? So you go to look for God, you find God, but then you get problems in your body and you think maybe, oh, maybe I wouldn't have bothered looking for God. But usually when people have found God, they don't think that. They think, oh, I found God, doesn't matter, I've got this problem on my knee, it's a challenge, it's a test. You know, they kind of get it once you find God, right? The information from God. God is now leading you. So... But then, you know, this is a challenge here, isn't it? Hang on a minute, the one who's leading me, now there's a disruption with this source energy coming from God, and that's a challenge, and I've got to deal with it. Fourth stage. The Artira. Jezebel, power and morning star. Now, Jezebel's written in there. Of course, you know, that is the temptress. So you're doing all good and everything, you've got your source energy sorted out. But the the temptress is there, the Jezebel, you know, to throw you off. And there's your body part on this, I've got your own energy, kind of like your own stores of energy, you know. A bit iffy, I suppose. Fifth stage, the church is Sardis, the few. Only the few in this church were okay, and they would wear get to wear white robes uh, but they weren't very happy with the majority of this so is this a stage where some people stay here for a long time and some people move on like the earth was there for 19 years that's that's where we were 1995 to 2014 and there were just a few as well but for your own personal thing you know how long do you want to stay in this stage not long, I suggest. Mind. So the part of the body, the mind, the, the mind gets disrupted and that's a challenge. Sixth stage. The church. Laodiceans. Lukewarm. Open the door, let Jesus in. Jesus is knocking on the door. It's all about the heart. And... Uh, you know, maybe after you've got all these stages, maybe it's quite easy to become a bit lukewarm because actually you're quite, you're doing quite well, you know, you're all right. You're doing pretty good. Um, so it could be that temptation could be just to, and I'm doing it myself, um, the biscuits, the chocolate, the mockers, uh, you know enjoying those things you know being re pretty much quite happy in life and stuff you know it can be a bit um complacent can get complacent we need to let let, let open the door basically open the door to your heart 
That's absolutely the amazing best advice. There, there's, um, you know, it, on my moon mood things, I'm I'm low, so I'm not putting too much pressure on myself at the moment. But you know, I'm I'm always I'm I'm cheered by every time that um, my heart seems to win. Like I've no I've noticed, you know, I'm not trying not to wank say I'm not trying not to but I'm thinking about those sort of things much less and less and um, but I've found it a bit challenging when a feeling does come to resist it you know I've kind of just thought I'll just do it you know, need to empty out the pipes or whatever and um, then a couple of days ago you know I've just found that you know I'm more, I just wanted to I wanted here to to not give in in a sense, and I just thought I just won't touch it, you know. Even though I'm feeling the real urge to go and spank one off, if I just don't touch it, and don't think in my head that oh I need to, otherwise my pipes will get blocked up or anything. I didn't, so I didn't touch it. And then I think when I was walking up, obviously I've been getting erections, and so you know that kind of produces a bit of sperm, I think, and I. Just running upstairs, and because of the movement, I've just felt a little bit of come, come out, <laughs> tiny bit. So I hadn't touched it, you know. And then, and then I could, ju and then the feelings had pretty much gone away. So I wasn't that. I didn't have the urges then. You know, it's been over a period of about half an hour, I suppose, sitting there, feeling the feelings, allowing the urges, allowing the thoughts that I wanted to think. But then just not touching it, and then, like I say, because that bit of sperm came out, that's less thoughts of, oh, it's going to get trapped. Anyway, so I'm, I'm just happy that, you know, without having to put the willpower in to, to stop myself doing what I want to do, without doing that, I am I am making improvements. The heart is winning more often. <laughs> And then um, the seventh one, which I haven't written there yet. The seventh one is all uh, uh, seventh trumpet, temple of God opened in heaven, lightnings, voices, thunderings. As as I just read a minute ago, it's all I'll draw pictures of lightnings, thunders, and earthquakes. The vial into the air, it is done. So I put on body parts of the whole, you know. And um, and the the church there would be Philadelphia. Philadelphia, good. An open door. False Jews will kneel at your feet. Pillar in the temple. New name and new Jerusalem. So it's all good, you know. Seven's all good. We're all good once we get there. It's just like a few loose ends that need tidying up here, isn't it? I mean, we got and we got the you know the dragon that will be seized, and we've got the uh, the lamb's wedding party. So um, you know, it's all, all good to look forward to um, for those who wouldn't mourn Babylon falling. You will have to mourn, and the thing is about this timeline is I'm I'm more sure than ever. So we need to look at it again, these dates. <laughs> I'm more sure than ever that is happening. Okay? It's going to happen. Like, the way we live now on this earth is not going to be the way we live on this earth in 20 or 30 years. Those big cities, this lies, the corruption, the murdering, the the sex and everything, all that shit and the money and the greed. It's all gonna be gone. I didn't see anywhere in there saying it's all gonna be consumed in fire. I didn't read that. Once, so that must be from some 
something else. The earth is not going to be completely consumed by fire. Now it does say in there is going to be a new earth, but that's going that's after the thousand years. So at least for a thousand years we're not going to have a new earth. And it's not going to be terrible either. And I even you know, and in a sense the new earth it doesn't even have a sun. The kingdom of God is light within and and that at that point we're not going to sleep every day anymore. We've we come to the awakenedness. We were awakened enough to know that we're constantly going twenty-four hours a day. Anyway, it's just our physical bodies need the sleep. And in a sense, for us mentally, we probably need the sleep to sort of, to sort of, um, you know, keep. keep I don't know. <laughs> I mean. It's sort of when you've gone to sleep and wake up the next day, it's sort of like a new start, you know, it feels it's like a new day, isn't it? It's like a born again, in a sense. But once we've awakened enough to know what we are and everything, we'll, we're less likely to need that sort of stuff. So we're gonna get we're gonna get these seven plagues well they've already started. The tent of testimony is thrown open. Testimony, see? People and their testimonies. You know, me too or Brian Harvey and their testimonies. Tommy Robinson. The truth coming out. And also, like with me thinking I'm the lamb, it's nice to know that I've got plenty of time. I mean, I would have liked the lamb's wedding. Now, I actually said, the angel actually said, would you like me, not to me, in the Revelation, said to John, do you want me to show you the, la the bride of the lamb? And the bride of the lamb was New Jerusalem. So I'm not sure about that. Maybe the lamb isn't a person. So maybe then I'm not the lamb. Right, well, okay, I've probably talked about it enough then. <laughs> uh, if I want to talk about it more. There's no one's showing any interest. I'll just have to talk about it with God. So I'll do that. Okay, bye.